School of Instructions is a book-length poem about the experiences of West Indian soldiers during World War I. Aishan Hutchinson presents us with the raw trauma of war and empire, how these soldiers fought and died in the British Army. At the same time, though, he wants us to imagine how they might have lived, how they went to school, fell in love, ate a cake, visited an aunt, and to do this he creates the character Godspeed, a young, mischievous boy living in rural Jamaica in the 90s. We hear Godspeed's voice in perhaps its purest form in the very first page of the poem. It's a simple tune, a little song he might have sung while growing up. Even here, though, there's the threat of violence. When I was researching the poem, I found out that the word autoclaps is Jamaican patois for crisis or trouble. In that context, Godspeed's rin tin tin sounded less like singing and more like rifle fire. The next part of the poem begins with a single line floating in the centre of a page. Above deck, ice scarred, off to Albion. To me, this journey seems almost mythic. Albion is an ancient name for Britain, and Above Deck reminds me of pirate adventures or fairy tales. But Ice Scarred is terrifyingly literal. It takes the journey and folds it into vulnerable human flesh. School of Instructions is closely concerned with journeys, with scale and place, and of course the human body. Part three of the poem is titled The Anabasis of Godspeed. Anabasis was an ancient Greek text referring to an army's advance into the interior of a country. Of course, this is a physical journey that many West Indian soldiers made, but it's also a psychological journey that Godspeed makes into himself. The advance is unrelenting. Stanzas become paragraphs, squat blocks of text, and there's no commas in the sentences, so there's no room to breathe. Almost every place name is capitalised, like they've been stamped onto the page. Godspeed encounters places that no longer exist, like Babylon, and places that never existed, like Atlantis, alongside cities, Jericho, Port Antonio, and Hiroshima, and bodies of water, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean, the Nile. And, of course, there are smaller, more private places taken from Godspeed's childhood in Jamaica. Brian's Bay and the village of Airy Castle. Everything in this poem feels like it's the product of intense heat and pressure. Hutchinson is pressing together not just distant places and time periods, but distant images and ideas. He applies textures to abstract things, corrosive dates, and velvet sadness. And in this melty, malleable world, Godspeed tumbles through like a clumsy god. He bookmarked an entry in his Britannica with a beam of sunlight. He unplugged the sun and went to bed. He opened his ears, not like the lid of a coffin, but like the great stone rolled back from the door of the sepulchre to exhale gas and Christ. Religion is also worth noting here, because like everything else in the poem, it's a product of things being pressed together. There are many references to Christ, Christianity being the dominant religion in Jamaica and Britain, but there are also references to Islam and Judaism, dominant religions in the Middle East, where most West Indian soldiers were sent to fight. On one page, a common holy phrase in Arabic is interspersed with the names of perished soldiers. The poem also uses the Hebrew letter Ayin to divide each of its parts. Ayin is a silent letter. It can't speak, it can only see, and it's closely associated with vision. Perhaps this represents the poet, or even the reader, bearing silent witness to the experiences of these soldiers. I think School of Instructions is an achievement. People say that all the time about books, this is the poet's greatest achievement, but what I'm trying to say is that I think Hutchinson achieves something. He manages to shape out of these ragged messes in history, a sort of model for survival, a way to remember and humanise these soldiers while confronting the imperial legacy that silenced them. It's a poem about war, sure, but it's also a poem about placehood, identity, memory, and language. I mean, the language in this poem, it, it really takes the breath out of you. It's 
totally beautiful and totally terrifying. If you haven't read this book, like, go read it. <laughs>